Hi, it's Paul from Henge Herbivore. Today we're talking interval training. Okay, so with your, your cardio, you've got two approaches, continuous training and your intervals. So continuous, it tends to be longer distance, slower paced, and think, you know, jogging, you know, after a marathon, like triathlons would be at the extreme end of the scale. Versus intervals, which are more like a sprint, so they're really aggressive, like really hard, fast bursts, you know, giving it all out for a short time. Uh, and then it's a longer period of rest. And so intervals mean you're doing several rounds, high intensity, low intensity. You can either be, you know, going running for your life and then stopping dead, or, you know, so that would be called high intensity interval training or HIIT. Uh, or a normal interval can be anywhere in between. You know, it wants to be pretty hard though. It wants to be anaerobic. Um, so basically you're, burnt, you're making energy without oxygen. It's a really horrible, painful, uncomfortable way to train. But versus the aerobic training, it's many times more effective. It's more fat burning. It's actually muscle building and the fitness because your heart rate is going through the roof, you know, your heart rate goes too high, it can kill you. So very quickly your body adapts because you've given it the stimulus you need to, to, to be so, and just so much better. And um, again, with the continuous training, you can actually burn muscle off. With the intervals, we're hitting the type one, fast twitch muscle fibers, which grow bigger and stronger. And um, yeah, just all around, uh, just so much better. So that's what we're doing today, intervals. Okay, so if you suffer with high blood pressure, it's not for you just yet, you need to do some aerobic training, get your blood pressure down to at least normal, okay, and then it's time to up the ante. So there's many different ways or forms of HIIT training we can do, which include running. <laughs> Cycling. many others as well. Um, the protocol, basically you work as hard as you can for a short period and then you have a rest period in order to recover as much as possible before bam you hit it really hard again. Um, with your warm up, your training and your cool down should take no more than about 20 minutes at t up to a maximum probably I would say 10 minutes of actual work. The point of HIIT training is to go as hard as you can. So if you then prolong that, maybe you have a really good week and then you think, right, next week I'm gonna do it for longer. No, do it for faster, that's the whole point. We're trying to raise the heart rate as much as we can to make your body then make the adaptations to get you fit very, very, very quickly. Okay, so uh, average protocols I do, I generally maybe do 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off. Uh, 20 seconds on, 40 seconds off. I might do 30 seconds on, a minute off. The 
work and rest periods, I mean, you could have them like one-to-one -one if you wanted, but it wouldn't be as effective, in my opinion, because you wouldn't be able to work as intense for that short time that you are going for it. And that's where HIP really, really does it. You could even start, and especially if you're relatively unfit, I would put in aerobic work first as a base, and then when you wanted to start HIP, you could do one work to three rest uh, and do it like that. But whichever way, you know, build into it slowly because it will hurt you. Okay, so before HIIT training, we need to warm up the body in preparation. Um, depending on the type of training you're doing, obviously dictates the way you're going to warm up. I'm going to be running today for my HIIT, so walking into a light jog, and you want to spend about five minutes. Really, if you don't prepare your body, HIIT training is that hard that you will tear a hamstring or etc. So do spend a good five minutes warming up thoroughly. Okay, so the next job is to stretch the muscles ready for action. Uh, calves first, which we will use the pipe stretch to facilitate this. I'm trying to use all my big words today. So dynamic stretch, so movement there. If it's too easy, you can always walk out a bit further. Okay, and that will accentuate the stretch. A few on each side. Try to get your heel into the floor. Now for the quads, butt kicks. Then the hippies. You want your soft your knee soft on this one. You want your soft knees on this one. I'm feeling pretty loose today, so I'm not gonna do a whole I do as many as you need to be properly ready. And then straight leg swings for the Hamiltons. I'm not having a lot of trouble there, so I'll move on. Uh, next we'll do a walk and lunge into a knee brace just to stretch the glutes. Okay, and now for the fun part, the training. So as I say, high intensity, followed by a longer in period of short intensity. Ideally have someone shouting out when to change. If you don't have the luxury of friends, um, a gym boss timer is really handy. You can program work period, rest interval, number of rounds. It'll beep at you to tell you when to, you know, when to go and when to rein it in. Uh, today we're doing running. It's a bit miserable outside, so I've chosen to do it on a treadmill. Uh, number one, health and safety. You should clip yourself on, so if things did go wrong and you tripped over, this button will pull out and it will shut the machine down and you won't end up grinding your face off on the belt. Uh, 
because I'm going to be going so fast, if I was to program the high speed and the low speed, the belt would take too long, it just wouldn't work. So health and safety wise, I've got to tell you, do not do what I'm about to do. But this is how I do it, because I'm dangerous. Dangerous day, they call me. Okay, so typically uh, HIT protocol is 4 to 12 uh, rounds or so, can be more, but again you don't want to go too long because it won't be high intensity, it'll be moderate intensity. Okay, um, once you're finished then spend a good 5 minutes as we warmed up, cool down, so a couple of minutes jogging and then I would say 3 minutes walking for the fact, especially if you're using just legs or well, the blood is going to be pooling in your legs. Although you've stopped moving, your heart is pumping like mad to bring blood and oxygen into the working muscles. So it would all pump there still and it would all pull and then you feel sick, dizzy, heavy legs. If you want to recover well, I always do your cool down. Last but by no means least, we need to really stretch off the muscles, return them to their full length so again we recover quicker and we don't hurt ourselves so running wise I'd recommend at least four stretches one for the quads all these stretches I'd hold for at least 30 seconds don't rush through them or they'll be pointless both your quads a hamstrings one for the calves this is my preferred method okay and not forgetting the hip flexor Okay, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and we'll see you in the next video. And then I'll put some outtakes at the end and that'll be really, wouldn't it? So if, can we delete that? I keep saying if instead of if. Okay, now for the fun part, the training. Did I say part or part? <clears throat>